Pastor Whitfield welcoming you to the weekly broadcast of Victory Assured Ministries. We're going to go right back into the series that we begun a couple of weeks ago entitled Uncommon Valor and Allegiance. And we're going to go right back into that study today. We mentioned in the beginning of this series that this was going to be a three-part series, but as we began to explore the scriptures and to understand what the scriptures are saying, we're finding that this series is going to run longer than the three initial that we thought it would run. But before we go into the word of the Lord, call someone, let them know that the word of the Lord is about to be declared. God bless you, and we'll see you back here in just a few seconds. We began by looking at the life of David. Last week, we looked at the life of Jonathan and how it played into Jonathan loving David. And today, we're going to be looking at Saul as a result of the very thing that we saw Jonathan do on last week in Scripture. So we have quite a number of Scriptures that we're going to be reading uh, or sharing with you. We ask that you have a pen and paper, or you can watch this series on demand uh, at, at your leisure. But we're going to talk about Saul today, and we're going to talk about the impact that Jonathan's actions after seeing David's bravery had on the mindset or the psychic of Saul. So we're going to pray and then we're going to go right into the word of the Lord. Father, we thank you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, from whom we are so grateful to. Now, Father, as we go into this word, we know that you're wanting to reveal and uncover and disclose to us the very mysteries that are contained within your word. Now, Father, I humbly ask that you sin your anointing. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And God, anything that would add, enter into our hearing or into our atmosphere that would prevent us from hearing what your word is saying unto us, we ask for the anointing that arrests all things come into play. And God, do what you do best. And that is being God. And God, at the end of the day, we will love you. We will bless you. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. When we look at 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, verses 13 through 14, it reads, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren, talking about David. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah, but the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And in 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, the same chapter, verses 21 to 23, and David came to Saul and stood before him, and he loved him greatly. He loved him greatly. And he became his armor bearer. And Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he hath found favor in my sight. And it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul that David took an harp and played with his hands. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter, verse 33, 31 through 33, and we'll stop reading there. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with the Philistines. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. We're looking today at the psychology of Saul and how it pertained to David's anointing to kingship. We understand that the kingdom was rent out of the hands of King Saul because of his continual disobedience before the Lord. God would give him instructions. He would not follow them. And God repented 
of the fact that he made Saul king over Israel. And as a result, God, as we know, gives Samuel instructions to go and to anoint a son of Jesse to become king and captain over his host, over his army, and over his people. And one of the things that we find that as David, as Samuel goes and anoints David, we understand that this event isn't going to remain confined. It's not going to remain a secret. Word travels. We all know how words travel. Come on, we do it ourselves. We hear something. We share it. And before we know it, it begins to spread like wildfire, especially when it's negative news. And one of the things that our media system has taught us is that the worse the news is or how bad the news is, the more it has a tendency to be heard and to circulate. But good news moves at a very slow pace. We see here that Saul has been rejected. All of Israel is privy to this. The soldiers on the battlefield, they witness this. They send word back. Word goes out through the kingdom that God has rejected Saul. But they also hear if that God has rejected Saul, who is next in line for his throne? Who is next in line for his throne? And he may think, and the people may think, that as one of his sons, they would also assume that Jonathan, his son, would be the next heir to the throne of Saul. But yet an event involving Samuel again, as he goes to the son of Jesse, and remember, Samuel even expresses his concern to God. After hearing that God is saying, go to the sons of Jesse and anoint a king from amongst his sons, he's concerned that if this word gets back to Saul, that Saul would have Samuel killed. But God tells Samuel to go and anoint a king. And Samuel as we all know, is an obedient prophet of the Lord, even if he's not in agreement with the word of the Lord, even if it endangers his life. He is not going to question God, but so far, but he is going to move by the desire and the will and the mind of God and the speaking of God to only do what he says do. He is a man that is open to correction. Let me share this. Every prophet that is listening to me right now, you must be open to the correction of the Lord. You must align yourself to hear, to speak, to say, to go, and to do only that which what the Lord speaks to you. Too often, we have prophets and people with prophetic mantles that are more than just prostituting their gifts, but they also are laying with the enemy. They have coupled themselves to go beyond God and to speak those things that he has not authorized us to say or to declare or that we even are hearing or seeing. A true prophet of God only speaks by authorization. And they only speak and say the things that they hear from God and see 
from God. And those things that God is prompting them to say in the spirit realm, there are some prophets of God that see things and God has not authorized them to speak. They have kept it unto themselves, waiting for the appointed season to be authorized, to be anointed, to be appointed, and to move with precision, to move in the timing of God. And even as they're moving forth, we'll allow God to speak forth and correct them when they're about to speak or have misspoken. How many times have so many prophets have misspoken, heard the correction of God in the midst of their speaking, in the moment? I'm not talking about afterwards. I'm talking about in the moment. But have refused to go back and make the correction. God honors a person who hears, who obeys, who corrects, and speak forth the thing that God wants. When Samuel saw the anointed of the Lord standing before him, knowing that David was the one that God says he has chosen, then, and only then, did he release the oil. Then and only then did he release the oil. Just imagine when this is noised abroad that David has been anointed king over Israel. David now comes to the battlefield. Goliath is taunting the armies of Israel. And Saul is failing to move forward that we talked about on last week. But here this little shepherd boy speaks about a lion and a bear that he slew, and that even this Philistine will fall at his hands. He goes out and he does exactly what he says he's going to do. Saul sees him, comes back, and he loves David. And the soul of Jonathan, Saul's son, becomes knit to David, even to the point that he takes off his royal robes and his garb his bolster, his sword, his bow and arrow, and his girdle, and he gives them all to David. Saul now sees his son backing up God's anointed king and vessel. Think about what this does for the mental capacity and the thought processes of Saul knowing now that God has anointed David king over Israel his son takes off all of his royal garments and places upon David who now acknowledges the will of and the mind of God. I imagine that God spoke to Jonathan in a way that he may have known or may not have known. But from this point forward, Jonathan becomes David's ally, an advocate, and protector. And he shares intel from his own father with David about the desires of his own father to kill David before he has an opportunity to even ascend to the throne. So just imagine the mindset of Saul seeing that now this young boy, this young boy, and I want to keep emphasizing it that way, is now positioned to become king over Israel. 
We've already mentioned that an evil spirit from the Lord came upon Saul as soon as David was anointed king over Israel. Listen, there are some of you that are living under a Saul spirit. Hmm. There are some of you that are living under a Saul's spirit. They have been rejected of the Lord. And God has anointed you in their stead. But they consider you young, not because of your age, because of your unfamiliarity with ministry's protocol. Because you're untrained, you're unlearned, and on the back side of the mountain and in the sheepfold, God's hand was upon you, preparing you. And they see the hand of God upon you. And they see the rejected state that they're in. Now this evil spirit moves upon Saul and Saul cannot control his thought processes, his behaviors, or anything else that is associated with him. Listen, there is something about the anointing that agitates every demonic spirit and force. It does not matter who they're on. Saul was still the anointing in which David refused to kill and lift up his hands to slay him. But even with the oil, he was rejected. And even with the anointing, an evil spirit of the Lord still tormented him even down to the very point that when they come back from battle when the women say Saul has slain his thousands but David has slain his tens of thousands when you're dealing with a Saul mentality when they have been rejected they will be tormented by your future Success. The spirit of jealousy comes upon a rejected vessel with intensity. Intensity that they themselves cannot shake. Intensity that they have absolutely 100% no clue on how to deal with it or where it came from. This spirit of jealousy is destructive in nature. You think that all the people of God are going to be sweet towards you. You think that every leader is going to approve of you. And you think that every leader is going to push you forth into your destiny. But when the spirit of jealousy comes, it is a vicious, divisive, controlling, manipulative, murdering, destroying, deceptive, honoring, full malice and discord, anger and bitterness that it will launch a major attack to destroy, misalign, and cripple your character. The whole purpose behind this is to destroy the purpose that God has for your life. They don't want to spend any time with you mentoring you, teaching you, helping you, 
imparting their knowledge and their wisdom into you because they understand that the imparting of their wisdom and their understanding would take away time from those to whom they believe they should make their impartation into. A rejected leader is blinded to the course that lies before them still. They will not see it into your life. They will not sow into your life. They will use you for the things that they wish to accomplish and they will look on you as though they were doing you a favor when they endanger your future maliciously. The spirit of Saul is not a mindset and a spirit that we want to gravitate towards. It is solely bent on following the desire of the evil nature and the mindset of everything that opposes godliness in you. And it will set itself up and align itself with others that whom they know they have the power to influence against you. And they will work every single angle as best as they possibly can until they have succeeded. Even understand the mindset of someone who is close to them that does not promote their thinking, their desire, and their will, they will even seek to destroy them. And although that person may, may remain loyal to them, a husband, a wife, a son, a daughter, a leader in ministry, that's been walking by their sides when they refuse to play their game. They themselves will be ostracized. They will be criticized. They will be put out of those secret gatherings and those secret meetings because they don't want the plot and the scheme to be realized. But listen, Everyone that has been dealing with the spirit of Saul. God says, the oil of the anointing is upon you to protect you from this mindset. God has arisen, a cause to arise, a Jonathan that is connected to a Saul who is not selfish in their thoughts thinking but has the mindset as we talked about on last week the mindset of the kingdom the mindset of the kingdom the kingdom of Jesus Christ this particular individual knows how to maneuver with a Saul spirit. They know how to take the information and know how to translate it into understanding. Oh, the spirit of jealousy has come because they see where they've been rejected and they're not Ignorant to the fact because they have been anointed. They recognize the anointed of God. When people are jealous, it's not because they don't see who you are. They see who you are. 
but they want to destroy who they see. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. The Bible says this very clearly, that thou shalt not die, but shall surely live and declare the works of the Lord. Because God's, say that again, because God's anointing is upon you, the spirit of Saul will not prevail. As a matter of fact, Saul is orchestrating his own demise, his own ending. And you need not to lift a finger, voice a word in disdain. You need not take any action but stay focused. Look unto the author and the finisher of your faith because he which hath begun a good work in you shall perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Everything that a Saul spirit does will not prevail in any way, in any shape, or in any form. Understand that the Spirit of God is for you to reject every thought process, the mental capacity, and the psychological impact that Saul would take and turn to use on you because you are anointed to be the victor in this case so that God would establish you in the kingdom and make you powerful before him. God bless you. We love you. Our time is up. I wish I could continue. There's much more in my spirit. We'll continue this on next week. We'll see you then and have a blessed week in the Lord. Yeah.